Have you ever been insanely bored in chemistry class when your teacher asked you to balance a chemical equation like this one? Well, hold up. I think you're missing something if you're bored. I mean, did you honestly think that the quantity of each material on Earth was static and unchanging? Because that's just not true. We can change one material into another through a really cool process called chemistry. Looking at this example, you can see four different substances, but they don't all exist at the same time together. First, someone has to physically bring these two reactants together and put them in the right environment and watch the reaction take place. In the end, all you have are the products. These are not just some letters on a chalkboard. These are real materials that have real properties and are useful in different ways. So let's go ahead and take away the products for now. Lead nitrate is a white powder used in a process called gold cyanation, which is how about 90% of all gold is mined. Potassium iodide is also a white powder, but it's taken orally to protect people's thyroids from radiation. What do you think will happen if we just combine these two very different materials together? Really, it's hard to guess. In this example, you get another white powder that's used as a fertilizer, and then a bright yellow powder used as a detector for x-rays. Whoa, well, wait. A yellow powder came from two white powders? Uh, yeah, that's actually right. It's very hard to guess the properties of new materials. It can be much easier to make them and then just see for yourself. This one example can be extrapolated to all of chemistry, because all chemistry is, is the study of transforming one material into another to make stuff that literally wasn't there before. This reaction is the main way lead iodide is made, so it's really important that we can balance it so that we produce the right amount of product at a given time. It's true that the elements on the periodic table are the building blocks of molecules, but let's be real. In everyday life, molecules are what's really important, because everything is a molecule. When you hear that scientists have a new medicine, that's because organic chemists are constantly working in the background to create new materials and see if they have any healing properties. Medicines are just as likely to be created in a lab as opposed to being discovered in nature. So, from the gases you breathe to the concrete you walk on, you're much more likely to encounter a molecule over a lone atom. Not all atoms on the periodic table make molecules, though. For example, the noble gases are usually pretty stable. But, even some of them can be convinced to join a molecule sometimes.